welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Alicia, and in today's video, I'm going to do, I guess, a try-on haul. So, uh, I have been a little stressed lately, and when I'm stressed, I shop. I shop for myself, I shop for other people, I shop for my home, I just shop. And this last month I have purchased quite a bit of makeup and um, I wanted to try it for you on camera. So not only show you what I picked up, but also try some of the products on camera. If there's anything in this haul that you guys want more information on or to see a little bit more in depth, uh, let me know and I'll go ahead and do that for you. Other than that, let's jump right into the haul. All right, let's hope this goes okay. <laughs> So the first product I picked up, first of all, holy crap, when I lay it all out in front of me, okay, I'm pretty sure I need to go on a no buy. So I'm officially stating it here and now, I am going to go on a no buy for all through the month of May. And then my goal is to carry that into June, but we'll see. Um, through the end of May. So we're gonna start small, have small goals. The first product I picked up is this Dior Forever Perfect Fix Long Wear Fresh Setting Mist. And I just wanted to try this out because I actually like both of the Dior Forever, the like Skin Glow and the the just basic forever one. I love both of those foundations. I don't currently have them in my collection, but they're definitely one that I would repurchase. I actually like mixing them together. I think they look beautiful on the skin that way and they last a long time by, you know, putting both of the formulas together. <clears throat> so this is what the bottle looks like and I have used this one a couple times. I like it. it have I noticed anything? No, because I've been paying closer attention to the primers and foundations. So I really need to use this with one of the foundations I typically use so that I can see if it does make a difference. But most of my um, setting sprays, I spray before primer. I actually spray them through multiple steps in my makeup, but I'm going to go ahead and use this. I will tell you there is a like clean, like a fragrance to it that smells, it smells like a perfume. Like I think it'd be a really pretty perfume. I'm not surprised. I honestly expect that out of some of these uh, luxury makeup brands. So like Dior, YSL, Lancome, Estee Lauder, Chanel, like I expect those scents. Um, this one does not bother me. It definitely doesn't bother me as much as the Charlotte Tilbury one does. Um, but anyways, it does have a scent. The sprayer is not the best. It's not as like even of a spray, I think, which would essentially cause me not to repurchase it unless the product inside is amazing. So we'll see and I'll keep you guys updated. I'll definitely like in about two months do a uh, like revisit to this haul video just to be able to let you guys know how things are going. So next I have six primers. Six primers. I don't even necessarily think that I always need a primer, but I bought six. First one is the Dior uh, Skin Veil Primer. I have used this a couple times and I actually like it. Um, this I definitely think helps to extend the wear of my makeup um, while also like being moisturizing. So it says it's an extreme wear and moisturizing primer, um, a little bit of illumination, and it does have SPF 20. I would honestly agree with everything that's on here. Um, it does give my skin a nice glow and it does uh, extend the wear of my makeup. So I have been enjoying this. I've tried it with multiple foundations um, and it's a product that, like for me, I already know that's gonna stay in my collection. I also picked up a full size of the Milk Makeup Hydro Grip Primer. I have used this primer before and really enjoyed it. I have the smaller size. Um, and doing the math, I just figured I'd pick up the larger size during the VIB sale. I am excited to have this back in my collection. I genuinely think that this does help my makeup wear longer. Um, a lot of people will have problems with quite a few gripping primers. What I found is that I definitely need to let this set down a little bit before going on top with foundation. 
Uh, so that's my recommendation to you guys, but highly recommend this. I very much enjoy it. It does not dry out my skin. Um, I don't think it's super moisturizing. I think it's more of like a little bit of a tacky texture. Um, but sometimes those primers really dry out my skin and this does not. So definitely recommend it and I'm glad to have it back in my collection. Next, I actually got this from Ulta and this was part of the 21 Days of Beauty. And this is the Urban Decay All Nighter. Uh, long wear foundation grip. It says it preps, smooths, and perfects. Um, and it's supposed to, you know, prolong the wear of your makeup. That's really the route I was going for. Um, I want my foundation or my primer to do one of two things. I want it to make my makeup last longer and give me moisture or either or. Um, the moisture isn't necessary. Like, I can't have a long wear primer if it's going to dry out my skin because then my makeup's not going to look nice on top of it. I have realized that I'm not really into the ones that like are pore filling, um, smoothing, anything like that. Now this one does say that it smooths the look of your skin. However, I went ahead and picked this up. One, you know, the sale, so I felt more willing to pick it up with it being on sale. But also, uh, Samantha March loves this primer. And um, I thought, you know what, let me go ahead and try it out, see how I like it. Um, and, you know, I've tried it a couple times. It does not dry out my skin, I will say that. This isn't the most moisturizing, but I don't notice, like, severe dryness, right? Now, um, I have tried it, like I said, once or twice, and um, so far it's okay. I tried it on top or underneath foundations that I either haven't worn in a while or that are newer to me. So I can't really give you a good good recommendation on this. It's still too new. So, you know, like I said, I'll come back and let you guys know. Two more primers. I picked up at Ulta uh, the Mil Milani Supercharged Dewy Primer. I do believe I picked this up based off of Jessica Braun's recommendation. So I did just pick this up last night. I've only put it on like the back of my hand, but the texture, the look, the feel of it, all of that reminds me of the Rare Beauty. The last primer is the It Cosmetics Your Skin But Better Primer. Uh, this is, again, like a pore gripping primer. It does say that it's a, I'm sorry, this is a makeup gripping primer, pore refiner, and hydrator. So, again, I'm not too interested in what, in the pore refining because my pores are there. They're there. Um, however, I was interested in the gripping aspect and the hydrating aspect, and I've used this primer a couple times now. It's actually in one of my projects. It's nice. I, again, I'm not going to have much of an opinion on a lot of these items. Uh, however, this is nice. I do enjoy it. You know, it's a nice everyday primer. It doesn't dry out my skin. Definitely gives me a more smoother look to my skin, but it's still hydrating. So that's it for the primers. And I am going to go in, I'm actually going to go in with this Milani one because I haven't used it and I am curious. So I thought this was a pump, but I guess not. It's just like a squeeze tube and I'm just gonna spread it all over my face. Now, just to give you guys some insight on my skin, I definitely have more dry skin. Um, it does get red very easily, so I would say it's slightly sensitive. I have just recently started retinol, so I'm finding like all right here is a little bit dry, so I have to be careful there. Um, and you know, I have some redness. I do have, my skin will easily break out, so just need my little towel. So yes, I'll say that it's sensitive, but I feel like it can tolerate products. It's just when it finds a product it doesn't like, um, it breaks out. And normally, like, right here. So you can see, like, some texture. There you go. So there's the texture of my skin because I feel like we need to, like, see real skin, right? I want you guys to see how things actually look. And you can see that just gives a nice glow. It definitely feels nice on the skin. It feels a little tacky, but my face feels moisturized. So that is nice. I didn't get this in the haul, but I'm going to go in with a little bit of corrector because I do, regardless of what concealer I use, I always go in with corrector. So next I picked up 
I guess what we can, could be considered two like foundation or base products. So the first one is this Chanel Le Beige Water Fresh Tint. I got it in the shade light. I'm realizing I probably could have gone up a shade, which I may exchange it. I mean, this is way, way too expensive to try to work with it, you know? Um, so this is a water tint. I do believe they say that it's like 70% water in pigment. Or something like that I'm not quite sure but I've been wanting to try this for a while I have tried this a couple times and it's nice it is very very sheer which I was expecting but I think it's not giving me the look I want because it's too light for me and it does come with this little brush and I will tell you this brush works beautifully with this it's like a clear base with those little pigment dots so it reminds me you can see those little dots in there the little like beads of pigment it kind of reminds me of those shade adjusting products that used to be really popular so as much as I would love to be able to show this to you guys I do have to go to work today so I won't be using this but I will do a video on it if you're interested just let me know in the comments down below I, I, I I didn't pick this up but so anyways I was having I was talking to one of them at my Sephora she works for Dior and um, you know I've tried a lot of Dior products and she was just telling me about some of the items um, and I I thought I had not tried the backstage foundation but I had picked up the powder um, so she gave me this little sample and look at how cute it is it's like in a glass bottle like, stop it. That's so cute. So this is in the shade 2N, which may be a little dark for me, but I'm going to slap it on right now real quick. It is lighter coverage, apparently, but it's definitely more coverage than the Chanel, I'm assuming. So that's, I mean, you can see that's not... That's a little bit of coverage. Hopefully you guys can see it. Just toned down the redness a little bit. So I'm going to go in with more, and I'll speed this up, and you guys can kind of see what we got going. And hopefully you guys can see this is the side without. This is the side with. So, I, like I said, I feel like it, it definitely took down some of the redness. Um, I think I have products I would like better. I'm just gonna clip my like bangs out of the way. Really just show that forehead off. All right, so I'm gonna real quick just finish the rest of my face and I'll be back. Okay, you guys, so I've applied it to my whole face. You can hopefully see that it did even out my complexion. Is it not full coverage? No, but it's not supposed to be that way. It does, let me try, let's see here. I think it looks really good over like my cheeks. You can see, now, I don't know how much you can see, but down on my chin and kind of my nose, like, okay. I'm hopeful you guys can see that it is clinging a little bit to some of the dryness around my nose. Now, like I said, I think I said earlier, I just started a retinol and I, I know that has a lot to do with it. Um, I'm trying to exfoliate and moisturize and all of that, but I am finding it's clinging a little bit like to the dryness here, but I think my skin overall looks nice and I'm just going to keep going because I feel like this is taking forever. So I picked up three concealers. The first one was by YSL and it's the Touche Eclat. A high cover concealer. I got this in the shade 0.75 sugar and um, I kind of bought this on a whim like I haven't heard much about it but it's supposed to be like a radiant high coverage uh, concealer so I am very very curious about this I'm not going to use it today only because I don't think this is like I wouldn't really pair one of my full coverage concealers with this so I'll let you guys know Next, I picked up two concealers. So it's the Lancome. This is the Ephesernes. I have no clue how to say that. This is their long lasting under eye concealer. And at first, I got it in the shade 210 Light Buff. And 
it's definitely a summer shade for me and I'm not there yet. So I would say it more so matches my skin tone. So then I went and I picked up the shade 100 Porcelain so that I could mix them. The Porcelain is more like of a pink undertone and the 210, I think it's called like Buff Beige or Light Buff. Uh, is a little bit more of a warmer undertone. So I am going to mix both of these and um, put them under my eyes. Now I have used the now I have used the shade 210 before and I think this is beautiful under my eyes. Now I only have worn it uh, twice so I can't really comment on wear time because I don't think I was really focused on that. But it is a concealer that, like, I don't... It really just depends. Why I don't do the dot, dot thing with this. Because it's honestly a little bit too hard to do. I just try not to put a ton. And then I'm just going to pat it in with my ring finger. And I'm going to take some up over my lid. Not a lot. Because I don't like the way concealer sits underneath eyeshadow. But that's a little, that might be a little bit too bright. I don't know, what do you guys think? This might be too bright just because like, so now I feel like it's made my under eye circles worse. And I don't think this is a full coverage. I think it's supposed to be more of a medium coverage. But, um, I mean, I'm looking in my mirror and it just looks worse. Okay, so I'm going to go in with a little bit more of the darker shade. I don't know if you guys can tell. You, I don't know if you can sell, tell the slight difference, but I used more of the deeper shade here. And this is more like a mix. The mixture I used on this side has more of the 210, and this one has more of the 100 porcelain. So tell me which side you think looks better. I, I felt like I needed a lighter shade because... When I set it, it definitely darkens. But I'm gonna go, I'm just gonna leave it there. I'm not gonna put any more. Moving on, this is a little RMS Beauty quad. It's the Living Luminizer Glow Quad. It has the um, Magic Luminizer, Living Luminizer, and then Champagne Rose and Beretti Bronzer. I've used this a couple times and um, it's a little tacky. It's beautiful. So it's beautiful on, but they're pretty tacky. I used to have a product like this by Ciate London. Um, I don't know, we'll see. I'm not gonna use it today because I just don't wanna deal with it, to be honest with you. I will play around with this more and, and definitely let you guys know. I picked up a crap ton of powders. So really quickly, I picked up the 2N and the 3N in the Dior Backstage Face and Body Powder, no powder. Um, I've used both of these. I don't, I don't know why I have everything in the boxes if I've used half of them. There we go. I think my winter shade, I could go for the 1N. I also wanted to kind of try these under my eyes, but I mean... These are too dark and I don't want to buy another one. So I've been using the 2N, but like I said, I can use the 3N. I wonder what the 3N would look like as a bronzer. Like, is that too light of a bronzer for me? Or too orange? I think that I can use this more in the summer. I might also exchange it for the lighter shade. I also picked up this Lancome Dual Finish uh, Multitasking Powder and Foundation. So this is like a powder foundation. I think you can also use it to set your foundation. Um, this is what it looks like. And I've had this product in the past. I enjoyed it in the past. But oh my goodness, I do not remember it smelling like this. I talked earlier about some of these brands with their scents. This is so heavily scented. So it comes with this little puff. It also comes with um, a thicker one. Oh, right here. It comes with this also. I don't even have words. So here's what the powder <laughs> looks like. Um, oh. Do you guys remember like Max Factor? 
or like CoverGirl, how their like compact powder used to smell. This is like one of those scents that I can't tell is it making me sick, but I can't stop smelling it. It does not smell good and um, I used this once to touch up and I'm pretty sure the scent lingered for quite some time. I'm not using this today. This is also like, I'm just not using it. I'm not using it. I will definitely let you guys know. I will use it more, but I don't want to be stuck at work and have this scent on my face. No, it's not, not today. It's too high cover of a foundation of a, like a powder. And I use foundation powder to set my foundation and on its own. So speaking of foundation powder, I also got the Dior Skin Forever. This says Extreme Control Perfect Matte Powder Makeup. I really should have looked into this more, but that woman, the rep, like really talked me into it. This I got in the shade 20. Um, I think it's going to be too light for me. Definitely, unless like I'm in the winter. Now this foundation is too dark, like... You know, so maybe the powder will work. But it's like, it's matte. It's definitely a, probably a bit too much for me. Um, but I'm going to try it out, see if I can make it work. See if I like it. But we're not using it today. The last, like, powder, like, product that I got is this Laura Mercier Candle Glow Sheer Perfecting Powder. I got this in the shade two. Now I have this already. I have it in the shade one. Let me show you shade one. It's actually part of like the products I want to use up this year because I want to hit pan on it because I've had it for so long. You can see, I don't know if you can see the difference. Hopefully you can, but obviously here's shade one and then I've got shade two. And um, I Based on Jessica Braun's recommendation, she had said that she uses this powder to set her entire face and that it honestly sets her makeup but gives this beautiful finish. Now, before I watched her video where she said that, I used to use this as a finishing powder or as a highlighter. Let me tell you, when I put this all over my face, the heavens opened up. This really does bl like blur your makeup a little bit. It reminds me a lot of the Dior like powder. So if you have this, um, try it out. It definitely blurs. It gives a beautiful candle light glow to your face. It's not too much. It acts as a setting powder in a sense enough but also gives that beautiful finish. So what I noticed though is that when I use shade one, sometimes I think it's a little too light and a little too cool toned. You know when you use a, a highlighter that's way too light for you and it kind of gives this like silvery that I think ends up looking muddy look. This sometimes does it like right here depending on the blush that I'm wearing. So I picked up shade two um, that will work. Yeah, that's definitely better. Now, it, it still gives a glow, but it's not, like, looking too silver, you know? So, I'm not going to use the Dior today. You guys have probably heard a ton about it. So, I did not get a bronzer, so let me real quick bronze my face. Alright, so I just used my Aesthetica bronzer in the shade Sunset. This is just part of one of my projects. So, next is blush. I picked up four blushes. First one, Rare Beauty. This is the Stay Vulnerable Melting Blush in Nearly Neutral. This may be one of my favorite cream blushes. Mine actually came a little like out of the pan a little bit, but I've used it. I love the formula. It's, this like sits beautifully over powder. So this is a blush that I can use over powder and not be like concerned. Um, it blends really well. It's, it's gorgeous. Next, I picked up a Natasha Denona Blush and Glow, the little mini like blush and highlighting palette. So I guess this is the all over glow light and then the blush is golden coral. So both of these definitely have some shimmer to them. 
well, okay, duh, the highlight clearly has shimmer to it, but the blush is more of like a satin. Uh, this is gorgeous. I really, really, really like this all over the cheeks, the blush and the highlighter. I think we're gonna use the highlighter today. The next blush is by Laura Mercier. I have quite a few of these blushes and this is the shade Bellini. Um, this is a beautiful like pinky coral. This is not, this is how I can tell my lighting is off because it's a little bit deeper than that. I'm so excited to use this. I love her blushes. <clears throat> this is the blush I think that we'll probably, we'll probably use that Laura Mercier blush today. Um, but I also picked up this KVD Beauty. Oh, this is, okay, so, all right. So this was on sale for like $12 and I think it's cause it's perhaps the old packaging. Like the box says Kat Von D. So, I don't know, but this is the shade Fox Glove. This packaging is really cute, um, but like I said, these are on sale at Sephora. I've used this, it's a beautiful shade. This is like a typical everyday shade for me, and the formula is nice. Um, I'm gonna go in with this Bellini and just kind of tap it on and then blend some out. And I love having my blush at my temples. But this isn't showing up like well on camera. Maybe it will when I go to edit this six hour video. Um, but in person, it's this beautiful like peachy coral summery shade. So I also picked up this Fenty Beauty Cheek Hugging Highlighter Brush. Um, I've just been really curious about this. <clears throat> I didn't need another brush, but did I need any of these? I dropped it. Um, no, I didn't. But I'm gonna use that brush, and I'm gonna go in with the Natasha Denona highlighter. I don't think I've tried any other Natasha Denona face products. This brush is nice. Um, this highlighter is not like intense. Well, I guess, I don't know. This highlighter is like showing up a little gray over the bronzer. Ooh, it's a lot of highlight. Look at that just like shriek. Uh, okay, I'm gonna use my big like Real Techniques Kabuki just to try to blend all of that because I'm not liking the way that highlighter was looking. I'm gonna grab just a different highlighter. I'm gonna grab my Hourglass little trio that I like um, and see how this brush does in that. I think it's the brush, you guys. Like, I don't like the streaks. I usually use more of a fluffy brush to apply my highlighter. Yeah, this puts it on really heavy. This may be better for me for a bronzer or even a blush brush. Yeah, not my favorite brush. I could do without it. But I'll keep experimenting. I'll see how it does with bronzer. All right, let's move on to eyeshadow. So I'm not going to prime my crease. Um, I just don't feel the need to, but, oh, let me show you what I picked up. So I picked up three different eye products. First one is from Charlotte Tilbury. It's the Bejeweled Eyes to Hypnotize. This is her holiday palette. I said I wasn't going to get it, and then I got it. So here's what that looks like. I'm living for these two color stories right here because I'm a neutral girl all the way. Um, so there's that. I also picked up the Charlotte Tilbury Green Lights palette. Or, or quad. I got this because of Samantha March. So thank you, Samantha, for spending my money. Um, not gonna use that today, for sure. The last product I got, oh, this is so beautiful. The Chanel Illusion de Ombre Long Wear Luminous Eyeshadow. I got this in the shade New Moon. You guys, look at this. Oh, it's so beautiful. So beautiful. I don't know if I'm gonna use it today. It does come with this little brush that I have used. Um, and it's handy. I like it. I'll definitely keep it with the product. So I'm going to just do a quick look because I feel like this video is extremely long. I'm going to use the Natasha or the Charlotte Tilbury Bejeweled palette. I'm going to go in with this uh, shade from the Happy Glow Trio in my crease. Probably do like a nice little warm brown look. And I'm using this Sephora blending brush number 42 
I'm just gonna put it right kind of under my arch of my brow. I have hooded eyes, so um, I probably do my eyeshadow maybe a little bit differently. All right, so I've got that color down in my crease. This is why I don't love putting concealer on my eyelid and then not priming. I don't know why I didn't prime. I didn't feel I needed to, but um, it's a little patchy, and that's not like her shadows for me but that's why I don't like having concealer as an eye primer. But I'm now going to go in with this deeper shade in the Seduce Glow Trio. I'm literally just going to throw that into my outer, the outer edge of my eyelid. Just like that. Not really even gonna blend it a lot. Okay, so for my shimmer shades, well, actually, I'm just going to take this fluffy brush and I'm going to run this kind of in my like crease, not up higher, just in my crease. Um, I'm going to take this NYX glitter glue and I'm going to use that on my lids. I do this because I have hooded eyes and I feel like if I don't, um, my eyeshadow transfers a lot to my upper lid and I'm focusing it on the inner corner like the the part that I didn't put the dark shadow I'm gonna use a little sponge just because I can sometimes get quite a bit of fallout with Miss Charlotte so I'm gonna pat it on the little sponge all over my eyelid but I'm gonna go back in with that brush I used to put the darker color in my outer on my outer eyelid and I'm gonna just kind of blend the darker I'm gonna take a little bit more on my brush I'm gonna kind of blend that in with the shimmer color a little bit okay I, I want to brighten up this lid some so I'm gonna go in in the trio happy glow Ooh. I'm gonna go in with this one right here I'm just gonna put it kind of on the yeah, the center of my eye. And I use a clean finger to kind of just blend it with the other two shades. Okay, so that's it for my eyeshadow. I, nine times out of 10, have something on my lower lash line. So I'm definitely gonna do that. And I'm gonna go in with the color that we put, that I put all over my lid. I'm gonna um, walk my dog and then do my brows and lashes and then I'll be back and I'll show you guys the new lip product. All right, you guys, I am back. My brows are done, lashes are done, and I did something with my hair. So the last product that I picked up is the NARS Soft Matte Tinted Lip Balm. This is in the shade Intimate. And um, I have used this multiple times. I really, really like it. I think it's just like a My Lips But Better nude, um, which is what most of my lip products are. But hopefully you guys can see, this is it on my eye, or this is it on my lips, and it's just nice, soft matte, like exactly what it says. It wears away beautifully, so you're not getting like any harsh, like, lines around the edge of your lip or in the center of your lip. It's very easy to reapply. I don't need a mirror to put it back on. And I really enjoy it. So yeah, so that's it. That's my haul that is outrageous. Um, definitely prompting a no buy, like I said. If you guys like this video, please subscribe so that you can see what comes next. And I appreciate you for watching. Bye-bye.